Indonesia is the world's most populous Muslim nation. Its constitution enshrines religious tolerance. But the Indonesian government is under fire. After the president, Joko Widodo, issued a decree to allow authorities to ban groups, including religious ones, which pose a threat to the state's secular ideology of Pancasila. The Security Affairs Minister, Wiranto, says... This decree is not intended to discredit Islamic organizations or the majority Muslim population of Indonesia. The major religious group in the firing line is Hizbut Tahrir. The Indonesian branch is not listed as a terrorist group. It's considered non-violent. It has long called for the establishment of Islamic law and a caliphate in Indonesia. The government announced its intentions to ban the group in May. A spokeswoman for Hizbut Tahrir, Ifa Noor, said, Every citizen had the right to organize, and HTI was just delivering Islamic teaching. Supporters and rights groups have both condemned this month's decree. The government backers see it as a counter move to the rising influence of hardline Muslim groups after worsening sectarianism, which was on show during the gubernatorial race in Jakarta. The incumbent Christian governor, Basuki Chaja Purnama, also known as Ahok, was put on trial for blasphemy during the campaign. Mass rallies to protest against Ahok were organized by the previously fringe group Islamic Defenders Front. Supporters of Hizbut Tahrir also took part. Ahok lost that race, was convicted and is now serving a two-year jail term. The government says it wants to protect national unity, but will this latest move lead to further religious polarization? And what effect could it have on Jokowi himself in the 2019 presidential elections? Natalie Pohonen, The Newsmakers. Well, let's go to our panel. I'm joined now from Jakarta by Ismail Yusanto. He's the spokesman for Hizbut Tahrir Indonesia. And from London, Afzal Ashraf, a visiting fellow at the Centre of Conflict, Security and Terrorism at Nottingham University. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Ismail Yusanto, sir, if I can start with you first, are you a danger to Indonesian unity? No. Uh, well, we are not in a treason of uh, Indonesian unity. Uh, factually, that is Butarir uh, has a high commitment uh, to protect Indonesian uh, unity. Uh, it's with her only that uh, one, the government of Indonesia at the time when they will uh, hold referendum in East Timor because uh, according to us, this referendum will, will separate uh, East Timor from Indonesia. Uh, <coughs> it is clear that uh, uh, it's with her has a, a very high commitment uh, in, in protecting the Indonesian unity. Mr. Yusanto, do you accept Indonesia as a living, breathing democracy made up mainly of Muslims, run mainly by Muslims, but one that has a secular constitution, which has freedom of religion for Muslims, for Christians, for Hindus, and for anybody of any faith? Do you accept those rules of the game? Uh, we, we, we have no object, we have no problem with uh, a plural, pluralis, pluralistic uh, society. Uh, pluralistic society is the fact. Uh, and uh, Hizbut Tahrir, as an uh, Islamic organization, uh, realized that we uh, could not uh, we, could, we could not re reject or refuse a, a, a pluralistic uh, society. But the problem is how we govern the pluralistic or heterogeneous uh, society. Uh, Indonesia has a long history with a secular uh, a government or secular system, uh, either under uh, socialism uh, during uh, old order or capitalistic uh, system uh, during uh, all new order. And <clears throat> the fact that all system, all secular system fail to bring right. our 
country to the better society, okay. to, be, to the better uh, condition. Okay. So, so that's why better, we then sorry to interrupt propose you, uh, Islam, propose Sharia. Right. Okay. So you say proper Sharia. So let me ask you very directly then, sir. Is the end game still a khilafah? Yes. Is it a caliphate which is run by your interpretation of yes. Sharia? Is that still the end game for you? Yes. So, of course, you can understand why the government feels yes, you want to threaten uh, unity. Because you want to replace democracy with Khilafah. They look at Khilafah, they look at Caliphate, they see Baghdadi in Iraq and Syria. They don't want anything that, that's even remotely close to that. So, of course, you can understand their fears, can't you, sir? Uh, first of all, that uh, it is uh, very important to clarify that uh, Khilafah is a part of uh, Islamic teaching. Uh, secondly, that, uh, that uh, Hizbut Tahrir uh, not in parallel with, uh, with uh, Khilafah al-Baghdadi in Syria and Iraq. Uh, from the beginning, Hizbut Tahrir criticized the Khilafah Baghdadi. Uh, even one of our senior members in Syria have been, uh, have been uh, kidnapped and then mm -hmm. uh, killed by them. So it is very clear that uh, that is is uh, Khilafah is Butari is different from uh, Khilafah al Baghdadi, and the third is uh, that uh, uh, we need uh, room and time to to explain to the people uh, what is the Khilafah uh, uh, and what is the necessity uh, of this country to to the Khilafah. Okay. So then why uh, then? how we could explain to the people when the room and the time closed okay. by the government. Okay, and I've heard this argument before. Afzal Ashraf, I wanted to bring you in a little bit later on because I wanted you to first hear what Ismail Yusanto had to say. And he said, of course, this Khilafah that they want, the Caliphate, has nothing to do with what Daesh or ISIS is doing, but they still want it anyway in their own way. Does Indonesian democracy have any space for that? Uh, and do you think that the government is right in trying to crack down on them? I think the government is right to try and crack down, although I don't think the way they're doing it is right. I think it will lead to further problems. What we have here in Hizbataria is a, an organization which is political in nature, which has been inspired by modern uh, uh, political religions. It's uh, a term that the, uh, the philosopher Voglin gave to the, to the modern movements, uh, ideological movements, uh, that have d decided to replace political systems. And they range from communism to fascism to this form of so-called Islamism. And when you look at their ideology in detail, you see that Islam is just a facade that they have adapted for political purposes. Right. And that's very, one, that's very clearly borne out by but, one of the answers you've been given. Sure. Um, but Mr. And Ashraf, I, I, I sure. can explain that. Certainly. Yeah. Mr. Ashraf, uh, allow me to come in here. How is it different to somebody having a socialist party and saying, I want a proletarian revolution and I want to upend uh, a secular democracy, I want to bring, up, bring about a Marxist revolution? If they're not doing any violence right now and their end goal is something different, but they're not actually actively committing violence to subvert democracy. Isn't that a bit of a conundrum? Uh, there is a, a conundrum here for sure, but there is a significant difference. Uh, and the difference is this, that um, uh, when you have a socialist revolution or a right-wing revolution, it is purely political. Uh, and people join or are influenced on the basis of that ideology. What um, these so-called Islamist parties do is that they um, hijack the identity of Islam. Uh, most people uh, obviously have faith in that religion, and many of them don't understand the details okay. of their religion. And uh, groups like Hizbut Tahrir are very good at mobilizing uh, falsely people to, um, to, to commit violence, uh, although they say they don't, but inevitably they do end up, some of their followers, uh, doing that. Okay, also, so let's ask they are, designed to, sure. they are designed to subvert democracy and replace it with a non-democratic system. Okay, Ismail Yusanto, are you hijacking Islam? Are you manipulating yes. people? Are yes. you trying to subvert democracy? Those are the claims. No, 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 no at all. 
No, we are Muslim. How could uh, we hijack our religion, our uh, uh, ourself, uh, our religion? Uh, 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 the statement is of, uh, is 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 is, uh, is no uh, zero zero. No, no, we we, we do not uh, hijack Islam. We are Muslim, and we we do da'wah, uh, and we bring Islam to the state and society. We have a right and we have a duty to bring our country, our, our state, to the better condition. Uh, the question is, how could we bring the, uh, the country to the better uh, situation or the better condition right. after uh, realizing that, uh, that capitalism and social socialism are failed? So we believe that Islam is only the way to bring our country to the better condition. It is our right and also our duty. We, we do not hijack uh, Islam. Islam is ours. Okay. Well, you're saying Islam is yours, and undoubtedly you are a big organization. I've seen images of hundreds of thousands of people fill up stadia, hundreds of thousands of your supporters. So undoubtedly you're a big organization. However, Mr. Yusanto, there's a bigger organization than you, a bigger Muslim organization than yours in Indonesia, Natlatul Ulama, who support the president's move to ban you. They're bigger than you. They have more supporters. They're a bigger umbrella group of the, what, what some might call the mainstream Muslim organizations. They support the president banning you. Tell me why. Uh, we should distinguish between uh, Nadatul Ulama as a society and Nadatul Ulama as a, a structural organization. We uh, mostly meet in uh, among society uh, member of Nadatul Ulama, Nadatul Ulama as, as a cultural cultural Nadatul Ulama, and mo and most of them are, uh, support us. It, it is very clear that uh, that because. They've come because out and supported that, the president's uh, move is, against you. Is Islamic teaching? It, They've come out and said the president is right uh, to ban yeah, you. Yeah, another ulama. Uh, yes, uh, this is another ulama as stru structural organization, not cultural society. Uh, so that's why uh, I uh, just mentioned we we have to distinguish between uh, another ulama, structural another ulama. No, uh, Nathatul Ulam structural right. and Nathatul Ulam cultural. Different. Okay. different. Okay. You disagree. And, Abdul Ash uh, Ashraf, okay. I would like to, Mr. Yusanto, I would just like a second. to tell you. I just, just a second, Mr. I Yusanto. Want to, I want to bring in uh, Abdul Ashraf, if you'll allow me, because I have to keep this moving on. And my apologies, sir. Let me bring in Abdul Ashraf. Now, we have the president wanting to remove judicial oversight. Now, this is, no matter what you think of Hizb tahrir this is dangerous, wouldn't you agree? Why isn't this good uh, enough for the courts to look at? And if the president moves away, judicial oversight in banning people, people hearken back to the era of Suharto, and they fear that democracy is going to slip away because in the name of preserving democracy, the president might be trashing their democracy. Is that a fair argument, Abzal Ashraf? It is a fair argument, and it's the sort of argument that uh, groups like Hizbut Tahrir are extremely skillful at exploiting. So I would... Um, uh, hugely uh, 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 urge the Indonesian government to look at this. And the, what they should be doing is confronting this allegation that um, Hizbut Tahrir are making, that they want to bring Islam into society, that they want to bring Sharia into society. They've already contradicted themselves. They recognize that uh, other people's version of Sharia and Islam is abhorrent. They have uh, uh, avoided accepting the caliphate of al-Baghdadi. Clearly, he is making a claim that he is a, a caliph. He is making a claim. His people are making a claim that they're running the country according to Sharia, which obviously they're not. So his Tahrir's version of Sharia is going to be different from other people's version of Sharia. And this whole idea of mixing religion with politics is not going to work. It wasn't the first constitution in Islam did not mix religion and politics. It did not talk about religion. It was a secular constitution in every sense of the word. Okay. Put different religions, Jews 
and and non uh, and Muslims sure. on the same plane. But, but then again, we're going and, and down. So the sure. laws. We're going down territory. No, no, where well, I'm sorry. I, no, certainly, no, 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 we're not going down territory. This is a territory that needs to be confronted. Yeah, I mean, so there's the, different, the different the interpretations of what happened 1400 years ago, right? I mean, you would no, call no, it no, a secular. No, the point. The you point, would call it. Uh, you would call Medina is, a secular constitution. Others is, would say no. The point is that if you mix religion with politics, I'll give it to you in secular terms. Religion does not allow compromise of belief okay. because it's a lack of faith. In politics, you need pragmatism. Right. Uh, and that involves compromise. Okay. So the two things cannot mix. And that's why you have the problems you have with okay. theological Ismail movements. Yusanto. So let me then ask you, Ismail Yusanto, would you accept yeah. tens of millions or hundreds of millions of Muslims around the world who consider themselves Muslim, who pray and fast and, and do all the things Muslims do, but they don't want to live under a Khilafah. They don't want to live under a Caliphate. Would you accept them as Muslims? Yeah, uh, I think it is normal because, uh, because uh, we are, as a Muslim has a long history living uh, not under the Caliphate, living under the secular system. It is normal that uh, some of uh, Muslim uh, reject caliphate, even reject Islam, reject Sharia. Uh, so the, the 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 main important, the most important is how uh, we have time and room to to cultivate them, to educate them, to explain them about Islam, about the about the the necessity Islam uh, bring to to the society and state. But are, you, are I, you open to them uh, explaining to you? Are you open to uh, them explaining to you that they are okay with their version of of practicing? Are you open to it being a two-way street? Oh yes, yes, yes. Uh, that uh, uh, that Islam has uh, a room, a big room to to uh, to bring us in 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 difference uh, because you know that. That uh, there are many uh, there is, there are many uh, dispute in in practicing Islam in worship for instance in 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 praying in zakat in hajj uh, so okay. so uh, it is clear that that Ibn uh, Tahrir uh, has a, 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 a clear uh, opinion about the difference okay. those okay. difference Abzal Ashraf very finally and sir I would like to okay, I would very like... briefly please sir very briefly I don't want to keep on interrupting you but very briefly because we're running out of time yeah please give us room and, and, and time to to explain to the people about Islam it is fair and when now uh, Hizbut Tahrir Indonesia will be banned it is unfair because it means that 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 we have no room to uh, and time to explain right. and how then uh, the people know uh, much about 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 us okay. about about uh, about Islam about Sharia. Okay, we got it. Uh, okay, uh, fair enough, sir. I, I, I think it, it is it is unfair. Okay, Afzal Ashraf, yeah. isn't that a decent point in the sense that at the moment they're not conducting any violence, push them underground and things might get worse. Just from that perspective, I, isn't he making a good point? I think that uh, explaining uh, everybody's version of Islam is a, a very good point. Uh, what I'm saying is that uh, explaining the version of Islam should not uh, correlate with having political power. Because as we've described, and you made a very good point about the, the problems of going back 1400 years, everybody has a different interpretation. The problem with Hizbut Tahrir is if you look at their um, ideology, their teachings, they want to use a political process in order to enforce, enforce their version of Islam. So they will have a debate until they have enough power, then the, it will end uh, without debate. That is the way it always happens with these sort of organizations. And what we've seen with ISIS is the culmination of exactly the same ideology. The only difference is ISIS has used violence overtly. These people are saying we won't use violence uh, until we have the power to use violence to enforce okay. a pan-Islamic state. So I think from that point of view, they are a great danger, but they can peacefully discuss anything as far as religion is concerned, as long as they keep it out of politics. Okay, I appreciate you both taking the time, and my apologies for interrupting you. I had to keep on moving it on. Ismail Yusanto and Afzal Ashraf, thank you very much for joining us.